the year is 2013. My buddy Wade and I took an impromptu trip all the way over to Japan. We actually had to fly through South Korea to get there, which was pretty wild. I didn't do a lot of video back then, but this is a mix of some video and some pictures and a little taste of our journey in Japan. We flew from Tampa to Atlanta where we actually ran into our friend Amanda at the Atlanta airport and then Atlanta to Seoul, South Korea which is a very roundabout way to get there but I was using my Delta miles and that was the flight that we got on. So anyways, flying to Korea, this is not what you want to see when you're on the airplane. It's pretty wild. But we did get some Korean food before we made it to Seoul, South Korea. And when we were in Seoul, we jumped on another airplane, a 747, to our final destination of Tokyo. And we are about to go explore Japan. Please be clear. Please be we took a shuttle bus from the Narita airport to the Hilton that we were staying at in Tokyo and decided to go check out the neighborhood even though it was kind of late that when we got in we figured we'd go get our bearings a little bit and then um, get ready to head out the next day and Go check out Japan for real. Oskare! Kawaii talk, Macha. Sabi sabi habu ya. Sabi habu ya. Whatever you want. Tank girls. And we quickly started to wonder what kind of neighborhood we were in. But uh, we did get our bearings a little bit, just a little flavor of the Tokyo nightlife. And, um, and then it was back to the hotel to get some rest for tomorrow. We stayed at one of the Hilton hotels in Tokyo. Back in the day, I used to get a lot of Hilton points, so it was free. And we got access to like the executive lounge where there was snacks and Japanese breakfast, which of course was noodles and rice. And if you look up, do you see Mount Fuji? Now sit back and enjoy some sights and sounds from our first full day in Tokyo. He's like an older dude too.
After a long day of walking around, it was time to call it a night. Catch a little Major League Baseball, Japan style. And good morning. It's day number two. We're going to just kind of walk around again. We're going to head down to the Tokyo Dome, that area of town. Check out the baseball stadium and the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame. And a couple other neighborhoods. And uh, that's pretty much going to be what we're going to do for day two. So here we go. I've always been really fascinated by how big baseball is in Japan, so it was really cool to go check out the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame. Ran into a guy wearing a Billy Donovan Florida Gator basketball t-shirt. I don't think he really knew what he was wearing. And then we went back to the hotel to call it a night. And you gotta love it when the cops is on in Japan showing America's finest. But time to rest up for tomorrow. Alright guys, I'm not going to lie, this is probably the number one highlight of my trip of going to Tokyo, the Tsujiki Tsukiji Fish Market. I think I said that right, something like that. It probably sounds better in Japanese, but anyways, this fish market is probably the biggest fish market in the world, and they auction off these huge tunas every morning, and they go for tens of thousands of dollars. It's pretty wild. We got there super early to go check it out. So the people bidding on the fish can actually check out the fat content where the tail of the fish used to be. And just wait until you hear these auctioneers. They are crazy. <laughs> What's up, buddy?
It's definitely not just tuna they sell at this fish market. You can pretty much get any kind of seafood imaginable here. And there's a very good chance, I would say, if you've eaten seafood, that whatever you ate actually came through this market at one point in time. And outside the market, they have some little restaurant kiosks too, cooking up some of that fresh seafood right there in front of you. I could have easily spent all day, probably a whole entire week at this fish market, but snow monkeys are calling our name. So we are taking a bullet train to Nagano, Japan. Yes, the Nagano where the Olympics were not too long ago. And uh, we're going to go see some Japanese snow monkeys. And uh, we got a little snack for the train and we are off. Now we did have to find a bus to take us to the actual entrance to the park. Uh, somehow we figured that out and then we had a little short hike into the forest where the Japanese snow monkeys lived. Cute little guys, but you gotta watch your camera bag or they'll try to steal it.
Gotta admit, those monkeys were pretty darn cute, but now it's time to grab some lunch, head into the city of Nagano, and go check out the Olympic Cauldron and the old Olympic Stadium, and check out a little bit of town before we end up taking the train back to our hotel in Tokyo. The next day we made our way down to Kamakura before I got stopped by this camera lady, uh, which is about an hour south of Tokyo. It was once known as the capital of Japan and is known for some pretty famous Japanese beaches and the great Buddha statue. That was a good day, but now back to the hotel for an early bullet train ride to Hirosaki for the Cherry Blossom Festival.
It was kind of an oddly dreary day at the Cherry Blossom Festival, but it was still kind of cool. After that, we actually just went for a little stroll through the town of Hirosaki before heading back to Tokyo for the night. Japanese baked goods were pretty tasty out here so we picked up some goodies to take back to Tokyo and the next day we were gonna go to a Japanese baseball game. And here we go into the Tokyo Dome for a Yomori Giants Japanese baseball game. And let me tell you, the crowd there is intense. The opposing team has their own band out in the outfield and then each player has like a specific chant that the crowd chants their name to. It's pretty wild.
food was pretty wild too bento boxes sushi they did have hot dogs but it had some kind of seafood mousse on top and then the beer was served by these little beer girls that had like little mini kegs of beer on their back it was pretty wild definitely a cool experience and i want to go back Our last full day there, we went to Royoguku, which is where all the sumo stables are. And it was about to be sumo wrestling season, so there's actually some sumo wrestlers practicing in some of those stables. And then we went to Shibu- Sh- Shibuya, which is home of the world's busiest pedestrian crossing. And it was definitely pretty wild watching uh, watching the people cross the intersection. And our last night, we decided to go out. We actually stopped by a 7-Eleven and saw this kid making a fake ID at the photocop machine. Uh, we found a Colorado bar. We found Outback Steakhouse, which we did not go to. And uh, we actually found a bar that sold Zima. But anyways, great trip. We woke up the next morning, took the train to the airport, and the vacation was over. But man, do I want to go back. <laughs> 